Now I wanted to talk about how to shoot and edit sunset photos without making them silhouettes. So I want to show you how to keep detail in the foreground of the image, like with your subject and the landscape, and as well as getting color and detail in the sky. So this is one of the photos that we shot at the sand dunes in Dubai. And my settings for this shot was white balance 5800, ISO 100, a shutter of 1 over 640, my aperture at 2.0, and the sh uh, we took the photo at about 6.20 p.m. So it was like the very, very last light of the day before the sun completely disappeared into the horizon. The reason I shot with these settings, we'll just start from the beginning. I had a white balance of 5800 because I wanted the image to be nice and warm. Now, I am shooting in raw format, so when I import these photos into Lightroom, I can change the white balance back to anything I need it to be, but... Just for the sake of it looking nice straight out of the camera, I had the white balance really warm. I had my aperture set at f2.0 because we were shooting a wide landscape, so I wanted to make sure that Christina, my subject, was nice and sharp and in focus. I didn't shoot at a very small aperture, so like a bigger number, because I wanted to keep my ISO as low as possible, and I actually really like shooting landscapes with a wide aperture and a, a shallow depth of field. I think it's just my style and it's what I like to do so I left it at 2.0 for like a little bit of an in-between aperture sharpness. So my shutter was set at 1 over 640 because when I'm shooting sunset photos in order to get all the lighting um, correct I like to expose the image so the sky is slightly overexposed and the landscape and my subject is slightly underexposed. If you expose a sunset photo for your subject to be correctly exposed your sky is going to be totally white. And then likewise, if you expose your image for the sky to be nice and vibrant and colorful, then your landscape is just going to be super dark and unsavable. So when I'm shooting a sunset landscape photo, I like to make sure that there is enough data in the raw file that I can save both the landscape and the sky in one edit in Lightroom. Moving on from the last photos of the day, this is another photo of um, Christina at the sand dunes that was taken about 10 to 15 minutes earlier than the one before. So this one was taken at quarter past six, so the sun so was image, still quite high in the sky, but not eight, by the set way, yet. Is. And the difference between this photo to the one I just showed you is that I like to shoot a few different exposures during sunset so I can have a variety of images at the end of the day. This image was actually shot with all the same settings except for the shutter which I had set at 1 over 500. And this is because I wasn't so focused on getting the entire shot exposed correctly. This was more of a portrait shot featuring just Christina so I wanted to expose this image for the landscape and for the portrait and I sort of forgot about the sky and let it be blown out in this in this image. This is another image that we shot at okay, 6 p.m. So the sun was setting morning. but was still very bright. I have my shutter set at 1 over 1250 and this is because the sun was setting but it was still very very bright. I exposed this image so the landscape and the portrait was expo exposed correctly and the sky is a little bit blown out, but I feel like it draws more attention into the landscape because we have photos with the sky with the correct exposure in some other images that we shot, so I wanted to try something a little bit different. So this is a photo that we took right at the Page beginning eight, of three, our seven, shoot eight. in the desert, and this was shot at 5.30 p.m., so we still had about an hour until sunset. As you can see, this photo compared to this photo, because we shot so early in the day, the sun is still really, really harsh and it's still high up in the sky and there isn't enough dynamic range in the sensor in order to be able to get the sky exposed and the landscape exposed. So in this image, you can see that the sky is blown out. I had my aperture at 2.0, my ISO at 100 and my shutter speed at 1 over 3200. And this is because I wanted to get a nice clean shot of the landscape with Christina. The thing about shooting throughout sunset is that the lighting changes dramatically over the span of a short amount of time. So as you can see, we tried getting a variety of different photos. We got some close-up photos where Christina is exposed correctly. We got some faraway photos where the sky and the landscape is all exposed correctly. We also got faraway photos where the sky is slightly blown out, but the landscape is really crisp and exposed well and vibrant. So at the beginning of sunset time when it's like 5.30 it's nice to get photos where your model or your subject is exposed correctly since the sun is really high up. And then 
Throughout sunset, as the sun is getting lower towards the horizon, it's nice to experiment with different lighting conditions. So I took a few photos where my subject was a total silhouette and the sky is really vibrant. And then right at the end of sunset, in like the last 20 to 15 minutes, is when you can take the perfect sunset photos where your subject, your landscape, and your sky is all exposed correctly. So now we're going to jump into Lightroom and I'm going to show you how to edit these landscape images into a final product that you can post online. Jumping into Lightroom now, I've selected two photos from our shoot in the desert. This one, which focuses more on the portrait aspect, and this one, which focuses more on the landscape aspect. So we're going to do some very basic editing here in Lightroom and with this image I'm going to start by cropping it by pressing R and changing the aspect ratio to 2 to 3. And I want to make this horizon nice and straight so I'm just going to adjust that. And I'm also going to bring in the cropping a little bit just so it focuses more on the portrait. I also want to keep my horizon line on the thirds of the image so just about there. Press enter. And that looks a lot better now. So I'm going to start by bringing up the exposure a little bit. And then to bring out the detail in the portrait, I'm going to bring up the shadows. And bring down the blacks to add a little bit more contrast back into the image. And I'll just show you a quick before and after. Now, because I was focusing on exposing the portrait correctly in this photo, the sky is completely overexposed. So even if we bring our highlights down, it's pretty much unsavable. So I'm just going to leave it at about minus 30. The next step is to sharpen the image. So I'm going to bring the 100% preview screen to Christina's face and just bring up the sharpening to bring in some nice detail to the image. There we go. So now I want to bring in some color to the photo because it's looking kind of still like a raw image. So I'm going to start by bringing up the vibrance and the saturation a little bit. I always bring up the vibrance more than the saturation because the saturation, when you bring it up too high, can start making skin tones look very orange. So I always leave that a little bit lower than the vibrance. Um, now that we've done that, I feel like I want to bring up the exposure just a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so coming down now to our split toning, I'm going to bring up the saturation of our highlights nice and bright. So it's going to look very ridiculous, but it gives you a very clear indication of what colors you're changing in your image. So now I'm going to slide the hue across and I'm kind of aiming to go for a really nice golden glow to the image. So I'm going to bring it around here to our oranges and then bring down the saturation to blend in the image. And I think it looks good about there. So we're going to do the same thing to our shadows, bring up the saturation nice and bright and move our hue around until we're happy with what the image looks like. Just about there and then bring down our saturation again. And if you want to see what a particular menu in Lightroom does without having to go for the full before and after using the backslash button, you can simply press on this little button here so we just see what the split toning does. So that's before split toning and that's after split toning. And I am super happy with how this image looks so I'm just going to leave it at that. So moving on to our landscape photo. This time I want to focus on correctly exposing the entire image. So I want to bring some nice golden tones to it and I also want to make the sky less overexposed. So let's start again with our exposure. I'm going to bring it up a tiny bit and the highlights I'm going to bring way down. So in Dubai, the sunsets are always hazy. There is always sand dust in the sky. So even in real life, you can't see the actual sun. It actually looks like this, this giant diffused thing in the sky. So brought down the highlights we're going to bring up the shadows and down with the blacks to add a little bit more contrast and i think for this image i'm actually going to bring up the contrast a little bit which kind of just adds like a simple s curve to your image but i think this photo is in need of that i also want to bring up the clarity a little bit just to bring some more detail into the sand dunes just a tiny bit about there now with the sky, I'm going to use a tone curve to 
sort of soften it up a little bit and so we don't see so much of this beaming diffused sun here in the background. So I'm going to go up here to the top right hand corner of the tone curve which is the highlights of the image and just drag it down through the side of the tone curve box just to crush the whites a little bit so it looks a little bit more natural here. And you can see it brought down the highlights of the landscape as well, which I don't really want. So I'm going to go to about here on the tone curve and bring it back up a little bit. So as you can see, it brought back some detail on the sand dunes. And then it's just about going through and doing little tweaks until you're happy with how the image looks. So I'm just going to do a little before and after. And I'm quite happy with that. It's like quite diffused the image a lot and it looks a lot more desaturated. So I'm going to bring up the vibrance and the saturation a tiny bit. All right. So to bring in some color back into the image, we're going to go down to our split toning again and bring the saturation up on the highlight and then move the hue around until we're happy with the golden tone. So I think just about there is perfect and bring it down a little bit and same thing with the shadows the shadows are actually quite like here on red so i'm going to leave the hue where it is because that's a nice red color and just bring that up until i'm happy perfect okay so let's go down to the next section which is detail and sharpening i'm going to bring the preview box to christina here and sharpen the image i'll bring up the amount and the radius and that gives us a really nice sharp image. Here's a little before and after. Boom, it just adds like so much detail. I love sharpening. <laughs> it's like my favorite. Because this image wasn't cropped in like our portrait, you we also have a little bit of vignetting here around the corners. So I'm going to bring that up so we don't see as much of it. There we go. All right, let's have a look at a before and after. And there we have it. That's how I edit my sunset photos so they don't look like silhouettes. <laughs> I hope this tutorial has been helpful for you guys. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else from me, please let me know in the comment section below. And please be sure to subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos twice a week. Um, sometimes they're vlogs and sometimes they're tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.